Hi, I'm Tom Long. One of the great pleasures of retiring to Coastal Carolina is having more time to really dig into my Bible study each morning and spend more time in prayer. For the last few years, I've been going over the four lectionary readings for the coming Sunday and just repeatedly, repeatedly studying them each morning of the week. And it's been an incredibly enriching time for me. This week, I'd like to share with you some of the questions that the gospel reading, John chapter 1, verses 43 through 51, raised for me. But first, let's read through the passage together as I play We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder on the guitar and keyboard. read a passage like this, does it raise questions in your mind? For example, our reading starts by telling us Jesus is leaving to go back to Galilee. I wonder what would have become of Nathaniel's faith if his friend Philip hadn't gone to get him before Jesus left. Nathaniel doesn't listen to Philip's testimony and say, got it, I believe that. <laughs> Instead, he responds with a question uh, almost challenging. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? What other people explored Jesus' claims with questions before coming to faith? And what does that tell us about how God might react to our questions, even our challenges to him? Nathaniel's question seems like it might include some predisposition as to whether Jesus could be Messiah just based on the fact that Jesus was from Nazareth. When you share your faith with others, what prejudgments might they make that would keep them from being receptive to your testimony? If you polled your friends on what they think of the church, church people, and professional ministers, would you expect to hear positive things? Negative things? Maybe a mixed review? <laughs> Philip responds to Nathaniel's question with just three words. Come and see. <laughs> I even imagine him to have flashed a knowing smile. Why do you think he was so confident that seeing Jesus would be enough? At this point in John's Gospel, we only know of three disciples that Jesus had rounded up, Andrew, Peter, and Philip. All of them are from Bethsaida, which literally means house of fishers, or as I like to think of it, Fisherville. So Jesus' use of words when he sees Nathanael coming is kind of clever. Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. It's clever because the word translated as deceit uh, properly means bait, as in what a fisherman uses to trick a fish into being caught. Nathaniel asks him, how do you know me? What do you think Nathaniel heard in Jesus' statement that made Nathaniel think that he was known? Jesus answers Nathaniel's question by telling him, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. 
And with that, Nathaniel has seen and heard enough. He responds, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. In the last verse of our reading, Jesus changes from addressing just Nathanael to all of the disciples, telling them this, they would see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Do you remember the Old Testament story where there was a ladder or stairway to heaven with angels? ascending and descending, going up and down? How did the disciples see Jesus open the way to heaven? Would Nathaniel's experience have been enough to bring you to faith? <laughs> when you first began looking for the God who already knew you, what did you see that brought you to a profession of faith? Where would you be spiritually if your Philip hadn't invited you to come and see? No matter where you are in the world, I suspect that there is a place where you could go to do what Nathaniel did, to come and see Jesus for yourself. I know. You've got your ideas about the church. You've got your ideas about Christianity. I just want to invite you to go and see because somewhere in your community, there's a, a shelter being run by Christians. There's a food pantry being run by Christians. If you live in an underserved community, there may be schools that were built or hospitals that were built and are being served by Christians. You may have shelters in your community. You may have a food pantry. There's so many different ministries, Habitat for Humanity. Just show up and volunteer for a morning or an afternoon and see what Jesus is about. And then decide for yourself. Come and see.